Hello, my name is Dave Fornes. I'm a forester with New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. I work with private businesses on the utilization and marketing of forest products. I've only been with the state a number, few years now. Uh, my background experience has been mostly with the industry. I've worked for sawmills as a procurement forester. I've worked in management of dementia mills. Uh, I've run dry kilns on a commercial basis. For a while, I even owned my own business where I sold hardwood lumber on a retail mail order basis. It's given me a nice background uh, of our industry, of forest products. I'd like to offer some of that background and experience that I have to help you out now with sawing of hardwood logs and working with hardwood lumber. Whether you're already in the sawmill industry or even just considering going into the industry, this information we're providing today is very important to you. Not only from a profitability standpoint, but also we all must be concerned and be careful that we use our forest resources wisely. In this video, we're going to be showing you the different methods used in industry today to convert hardwood logs into lumber. The predominant methods used include grade sawing, quarter sawing, live sawing, and sawing from the inside out. Let's start first with grade sawing since that is the most common method used in the industry. Okay, by grade sawing, I mean that we're going to try to develop grade lumber off of this. Grade lumber in hardwoods is lumber produced by the NHLA standards or National Hardwood Lumber Association. That's obviously the higher grade lumber is the lumber that's worth most, most money. It's the lumber that's the most clear, doesn't have defects on it. So we're going to try to saw as much clear lumber or nearly clear lumber off the log. Now hardwood log, just by its very nature, grows with limbs on it and those limbs are located inside that stem. After the limbs shade off through natural processes, the tree is able to put clear lumber around the outside. What this all boils down to is the fact that the clear lumber is, per, for the most part, concentrated on the outer portion of the bowl of this tree stem. As you go further into the stem, you're going to find more knots or more defects. So we're going to try to get as much lumber off the outside first. And, by, and while we're doing that, we're going to want to work around any knots or defects that we see on the outer bowl of the stem. Now let's start off by turning this log and identifying the defects that there are that we've got to work around. Okay, we'll look at all sides of this log and try to decide where the defects are located. Defects are caused either by branch stems that have healed over or maybe haven't even healed over and been just trimmed off. Any wound to the tree, uh, any damage that could have happened to it like frost checks. We have to locate those in order to determine where we're going to saw the grade lumber from this log. Here's an example of what we call a cat face. It's a smooth portion of bark with a little line running through it. That tells me that there was a wound at that portion of the log. I don't see any rot associated with it, but it is a place where we're probably going to find a defect after we open the log up, which will affect the grade of the lumber. Another place down here I notice is some bumps, some protrusions. I don't see any rot associated with them, but those are some places where the tree has healed over an old branch. And as soon as you take the skin of that off, you're going to have a knot that will affect the grade. As I said, let's roll the log and see which other ones we can find. Now one way, obviously, could have been to look at this log as we rolled it on the deck up to the mill, or maybe even look at it as it's lifted up onto the bed of the mill. What we'll do since we already have it on the bed of the mill is we'll turn it with a log turner itself and look for more defects. I don't see any along this face here yet. Looks pretty clear. There's probably, there's a little bit of a odd portion right here that's going to open up into a knot or defect. That seam there isn't going to be any problem at all. It's just a, a little contortion of the bark, but I don't think that that's going to cause any grade problems. So that defect there, this is the one that we saw earlier. Let's spin a little bit more, Jerry. Okay, basically I, it's just those three main defects that we saw, the cat face, this one, and that other defect on the other side. 
And just before we saw, I want to get the scale of this log because we're going to scale the lumber up. I'd like to see how it comes out compared to the log scale. In other words, we'll compare the lumber scale to the log scale to see what overrun we have with a portable band mill. This is a 12 foot long log, which means I'm going to take my log scale stick. This happens to be an international scale and read the scale for 12 inch, uh, 12 foot long logs. I'll measure it two different ways. This way says 170 board feet, and this one gives me 100 and, yeah, close enough to 170. There's not a lot of flare associated with that, so let's say we've got 170 board foot log scale on this log. We'll remember that and we'll compare it to the lumber scale later. Now, we're going to keep in mind where all the defects are located on the outer stem of the log, or the outer surface of the log, and determine where we're going to start sawing. Now remember, we're going to try to produce clear lumber and we're going to try to work around those defects. The first cut you make on the log will determine the opening face as we call it, but will also determine each face after that because we're turning this round stem into a square and when we take the first face and open it up, it also determines where this face will be, this face will be, and again where that face will be. We can position those faces anywhere along this, but remember the first cut is very important because it determines where each face is. Now, there's a couple different ways that we can look at that first cut. The first way to look at it is if your defects end up, end up being lined up in a row along the stem, and the defects don't have any rot or decay associated with them, we can allow them to be along this edge and put them in between two faces. Now, on the other hand, if I have a defect that's large or one that has quite a bit of decay associated with it, I'll put it in the center of the face because if I put it in here and it grows to be larger, it may affect two faces. If I put it here, it'll only affect one. So again, if the defects are lined up in line and are small, we'll put them in a corner between two faces. If there's a lot of decay associated with a defect, we'll put it here. Other things you'll find in the log are, well, maybe like a seam, a split going down the log. If the seam does, doesn't waver or go straight down the log and doesn't have any rot associated with it, I'll put it in between faces. If the seam is spiral or wraps around the stem, as it goes up, then I'll put it into one face so it only affects one side of the log. Now, you've got to keep in mind not only whether there's rot associated with these defects because they'll open up worse than what you see or whether the defect's very large. That will determine whether you hide it here or you put it in one face. Another instance sometimes you run across are defects that kind of uh, aren't in line but actually wrap around. Quite often it's good to put those in one face. So we've, just to review, the location of defects will determine where we make our opening face. Whether we put them in the center of a face or on the corner of a face will depend on the type of defects they are. this first opening cut, we're going to try to get a piece of FAS lumber, the highest grade of NHLA. That means that since an, a, a, an FAS board has to be at least six inches wide, we're going to want to cut a slab off that exposes six inches in width of lumber. Okay, this is just about perfect. In the narrowest part, of the exposed face, I've got about six and a half inches of exposed wood. That means that the width of this board will not keep us from making FAS. So we've got the opportunity for FAS. Remember that it's always the back side of the board for FAS which determines the grade. So I'm 
I'm looking at this face and I'm making sure that I don't see any swirling grain that would indicate that the back side or bottom side of the next board sawn off will have a knot on it. And this happens to look very good. So it looks like we'll get our first board out as FAS. Let's cut it out and see. into the best lumber, we want the saw line to be parallel to the outer bowl of the log. That's where if you've got a mill that has taper set, you'll want to move the narrow end of the board, the log I mean, up in the air so that that saw line is then parallel, like I said, to the top face. Now we'll remove the first board which again, what we're looking for is an FAS piece of lumber. And then after we take this board off, we'll again look at the grain on top of the log to see if there's a chance to get another FAS board from underneath it. I'll be looking for swirls in the grain where the grain, instead of following down the log, turns into a circular pattern. That would indicate that there's going to be a knot on the back side of that board. Since FAS lumber is graded from the word face, that makes a big difference what's going to be under the board. You almost have to be a fortune teller to guess what the back side or worst side of the board is going to look like before you actually saw it. sawdust on top, but I'll brush it off and see if I see a nice green pattern. Now that looks pretty good. No knots or defects making themselves apparent. So let's keep working off the best face. Jerry, if you saw another board off. Now it might seem to some of you that it takes quite a bit of time to go back and look at that face each time before you saw again. But keep in mind that in most markets, FAS lumber is literally worth almost twice that of the next grade down or one common. So what I want to be that I do is produce as much FAS as possible. If it takes me a little more time, well, it sure is worth that extra amount of time to make material that's worth twice as much. As you can see, we're working mostly with four-quarter lumber because that's the market we have right now for white oak. and I'll make sure that we still have a nice space to determine whether we continue sawing from this space or whether we go to the next space. I want to keep taking lumber off of this side until it starts yielding grade that is worse than the next available face. Looks like we've got a real nice log here. I don't see... No, I take that back. There's actually a little bit of ingrown bark here. But, this is such a nice wide board, that ingrown bark still doesn't affect it too badly on the last board that we saw. But, I think it's going to affect the grade a little bit more in the next cut. And 
my best guess is instead of sawing this further down in, I think I'm going to want to work off the next face, which is a face right over here. So we'll turn the log. We'll turn the log and work on the next available face, Jerry. Okay, what we're going to do now is roll the log over to work at the next available face, hoping that that will yield lumber that's of higher quality than the one that we just left. Now when Jerry does this, we're still working off a fairly good face. He's going to use the taper set to lift this end of the log, which is the, the narrow end of the log, so that again, the blade is following a line parallel to the outer face. When he opens up the face, he's going to try to open up at least six and a half inches in width, eight foot in length, so that we can try to get an FAS piece of lumber out of it. Let's see how we do. to get that opening face being wide enough to make FAS. There's no sense wasting that clear lumber on a one common board, which is what that's going to be if you fall down too narrow. It looks like Jerry might be a little narrow there, and we might have to take another pass, but let me tell you, I'd rather see you take two passes to get that opening face than to cut down too deep and waste material. looking a little bit better now. Looks like that's going to carry at least a six inch width. Anywhere between six to six and a half would be nice. It's all right if at this end of the log it ends up being narrower because we'll just cut that off. I'm just trying to look for though a board that'll be at least eight foot long in that width. And that looks almost perfect. Now as Jerry removes that slab, We'll take a quick look underneath and make sure that the lumber is going to be as clear as I thought it was going to be. Okay, let's take this pass right off, see what this board turns out to be. Hopefully, if we guess right, we've got an FAS face. about the narrowness of this end because we'll cut that off and throw that part away and leave the other part of the board as an FAS board. Okay, let's look at the grain. I've got a defect right here, but the rest of the way down, Looks like I got fairly clear lumber. Actually, it looks like I've got real clear lumber. That's going to work out pretty good. The stick is three foot long. From this mark down, you've got six foot. You've got nine foot before this defect, which means that I can cut this board off here. I throw away approximately all. 25% of the board's volume, but by doing that, and this remaining board is worth almost twice as much as the board previous. So it's worth throwing that away and making more money per board foot on the remaining piece and selling the whole board at half the price. Which means I still have an FAS face here, so let's take 
another board right off. Again, the concept is we're going to keep sawing off of this face until the grade of the boards coming off it are going to be lower than those on the next available face. Now the next available face, by my estimation, is going to be one common lumber. So I'm going to keep taking off this face until I guess that the next board, if we took it off this face, was going to be too common. And before we take that two common piece off, we'll turn and instead work off the face that I'm guessing is going to yield one common lumber. We'll remove this board, take a quick look at the face again to see what we've got. Obviously we still have that same defect that we had before located here. But I'm looking to see if I developed any more down here, and yes I did. There's a knot right there. common by standard yield has to be 66% clear within the given number of cuttings. I've got clear material coming down to here in approximately six foot of length. I can still pull a one common piece out of that. If I look at the back face, the face that we have available for the next cut, I've got a defect that's going to be right here. It's still going to yield me one common. I might as well, since I'm here, take one more off of this face. There's a little bit of guesswork to this because the grade is determined by the worst face of the board, which usually is a face you can't see until you saw. You're trying to read that grain to guess what the grain is going to be like or the defects are going to be like on a face that I can't see yet. Let's see how this one looks on the underneath side. the defect that was here that we saw two boards ago and we still have the defect that's here that we saw on the previous board but did I find any more or open any more up here no I didn't do I see any swirl green that would indicate that the bottom of this board is going to end up having a knot on it that I don't see on the top well Green's following pretty much up and down this log without any circular patterns, which means that I don't think there's going to be any underneath this. Meaning that I still can get a one common board out of this with trimming that end. So let's take another one off of this face, Jerry. Now if I was operating the sawmill, instead of each time walking to the log and looking for the green pattern, I would look at the board that I just pulled off as I was moving it out of the way and determine the grade and the green pattern and making my decision while I had that board in my hand. So keep in mind, it's not as slow as it is in the video. You're actually going to be able to do this quite rapidly when you get the hang of it. the last one we're able to take off of this face because I noticed that the dead center of the tree is 
getting closer and closer to this face, which means that probability I am going to end up with lower quality lumber the closer I go to that center. Let's see what we found underneath though. Okay, there's a knot, and a little bit of ingrown bark, which we've been seeing on the past boards. There's the knot or defect that we knew was there because we saw it on the top of the board. Did I find any others down here? There's a place where the green is starting to squirrel a little bit. But worse yet, here's some ingrown bark here, which is going to affect the grade, meaning that I've got defects already on the top face of this here, 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 and here. You're not going to be able to get one common lumber off of this anymore. So we're going to turn the log and start sawing off of this face. Now you've got to be careful when you start sawing your third face because you don't want to let the distance from here to that face, top of that face, be less than six inches. We want to still have the capability in case that last face surprises us and we get some nice clear lumber off of it that we still can yield FAS. So we're going to saw this face down until the grade drops so low that the next face can give us better lumber or until that point in which our can is only six inches wide. Now, when we're opening up this face, we know that we're not going to get FAS lumber. So since we aren't going to get FAS lumber, we don't have to open the first cut up to a full six inches wide. That'd be wasteful. Since it's going to be common lumber, it only has to be four inches wide. So that will be our goal, is to open this face up so we only expose four inches in width on the top of the first board. Now also since we're working with a lower quality face, there isn't as much interest in trying to get the taper set to follow the outer edge for two reasons. Number one, it makes an odd size can't which you have to deal with later. But also number two, you don't have to open up the same length of board. The board doesn't have to be full length, the first board you pull off. Because the length isn't required to be eight foot long as it is in FAS lumber. We're just looking for common lumber here. Since we're already committed to taking a board off this face, Jerry's gone right ahead and after slabbing the top, he sets that, his set works to go through and take a piece of four quarter lumber. Sure it'll be short, not the full length, but it's still got some grade material in it and it still has the possibility of being one common. taking one more cut and then we'll look at the back side of this and see what we've got. Notice that as we get into some of the lower quality material, you don't want to take quite as much time looking over the faces. There's not as much difference in value between one common and two common lumber as there was between FAS and one common. You don't have to be quite so concerned of making sure that you get the log turned. If we take an extra cut off of it and it ends up being two common instead of one common, that won't be quite so bad. We'll get Jerry to take the saw back to the other end and then we'll look and see what we've got on this face. 
through the sawdust off. Nice and clear here. Got a little bit of indrome bark right on the edge, that's okay. I've got a knot right here in the center. There's still room to get a cutting out of that, past that. And at this end, I've got some indrome bark here that's going to affect the gray. Here it's pretty good. I'm going to think about this face at the same time I glance to see what's going to be on the next face. I think what I'm going to do at this point is turn the log and work off this remaining face. Mainly because I'm not sure how that big cat face area is going to open up, but I'm going to take the chance that it will open up real nice and we'll get some good lumber. It's all just a guess, but there's one way to make your guesses better, is to pay attention to these things as you're working logs or sawing logs, and you'll get better at making good guesses instead of bad ones. Just to refresh your memory, on this face, we've got that big area that had smooth bark or maybe a cat face. And if you look at the shadow here, is down in this area. I'm going to want you, Jerry, to, to try to cut six inches wide because maybe we aren't going to get anything out of it, but let's try. We'd hate to have it turn out to be perfectly clear in the first board and then lose the opportunity of making FAS lumber because we only went for four inches wide. As any of you who have portable band mills know, it's worth the time of washing off the log if you have the opportunity, especially if you don't have some system of debarking the log like with one of those log, log, let's see, log wizards, or uh, if you don't have one of the attachments that actually cleans the kerf area ahead of the blade. So let's see how this opens up. up at least six inches in width and if you've got to air, air on the conservative side and take another cut. Now this probably is on the conservative side but we'll see in a second. Yes it is. It doesn't take but a second that when it gets through there just to put it up, go back over and cut a little bit lower. Again, when you're trying to produce a product, being in this case FAS lumber, it's worth twice as much almost as one common lumber. That extra little bit of care and the extra little bit of time that you take is well worth the effort. Now we are getting fairly narrowed at this end. Which is okay if it's just on the end. Have Jerry go right off and take a piece of four quarter and see what it ends up being. And since we pretty much committed the other faces, when he's done with this cut, probably best that he goes and takes another cut right away. Cut this board 
what the back side or underside of it looks like to see if I made the right guess of coming over to this face instead of continuing on the other face. but remember that's fairly close to the end and I said that defects close to the end don't bother me quite so much. Looks nice here. Okay, I've got some ingrown bark, quite a spot of it here. But I've got the opportunity, that's six inches from here to here, of edging a board off of here. The total width here is about 12. I could take a 6 inch board here that would be an upper grade and then leave a 4 inch or wider board here that will take care of a common board and probably maximize this. So I'm not too concerned right yet. Yeah, this is pretty nice down at this end. We made the right decision of turning from this face over to this. We'll take another board off now. And that, after this point, we might as well save our time and just consecutive, consecutively take boards off of this face until we get down to whatever desired can size we're looking for in the end. All the remaining faces are low grade, too common approximately, so there's no sense trying to turn back to them later, later on in the process. Might as well just strip this right down to a can. The other thing I noticed is that the dead center of the tree is way down here. Chances are, if there's better lumber further away from it, we might as well keep working this face off. down until we get to approximately four inches and then turn this into a four by six can. One reason that when you're great sawing that a lot of sawmills saw down to a can and don't turn that can into lumber is because you can sell a can quite often for the same price per board foot as low grade lumber like three common lumber for instance. So why take the extra time and effort of turning the can into lumber if it isn't going to give you any better price per board foot? You might as well just saw it and get it out of your, your way. Or in other words, you might as well just leave the can in its full size and not waste any more time on it. Just saw the lumber off until you get down to whatever size can you can sell. A lot of guys sell four by whatever width. Four by four being the narrowest and then whatever random width after that point. We spent more time getting the grade lumber off the outside where the money was. After that point, you might as well just go into production mode and just strip it right down to the can. This is also the portion of sawing that sometimes if you develop a market for 
of this lumber that we're sawing now for maybe like agricultural purposes where you can sell some two inch thick or eight quarter lumber that you can uh, also turn around and develop that now and save yourself time instead of making two passes, making two pieces of four quarter lumber or one inch thick lumber, you can make one pass and take a thicker piece of lumber. Now in this case, they've got the capability of selling some thick lumber to the agricultural market and making money out of it. And that's the way they're gonna saw the remaining portion of this log. Now that we've edged the lumber, we'll go and determine what grade the boards are, what scale the boards are. And it'll give us a little bit of idea of the value of lumber we got out of this one log. This is a white oak log that we grade sawed. And uh, what I'm gonna do here now is start out with the first step of lumber grading. You flip the board to determine which face of the board is actually the worst. Remember that most of the lumber grades assign their grade based on the worst face of the board. This one's very easy because we've got a, a nice face here and we've got a face that's got quite a bit of wane on it. Now looking at this board right off the bat you can see that this half is almost totally unusable. The remaining half is almost totally clear except for this little bit of wane on this end. I don't think you'd really want to sell a board like this to a customer. So what you're going to end up doing is cutting it off throwing that end away. We'll measure, there's three foot and there's six foot to this point right here. If we trim that off at that point, we've got three board foot of lumber and we can make a one common board out of that. Okay, now remember the select rule. If a board grades one common on the back side, flip it over and look at the best face. If that face meets the minimum requirements for select, which is four inches wide by six foot long, we've got more than four inches wide, we've got exactly six foot long, and the good face will make FAS grade, then that board can be a select board. In this case, six foot fell approximately right here. We've got a totally clear face. Yes, it does make FAS rules. So this board ended up being a select board. So we've changed something that would have probably been a three common board or a two common board and we've upgraded it all the way up to being a select board. We've actually made money by throwing all that material away. It's easy to do. Now let's go on to the next board. Okay, we're going to start out with this board by Again, flipping it over to see which is the worst face. I've got defects here, 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 and here on this face. 
This face, I've only got a defect here and here. I would say that I'd be able to cut actually a better grade out of this than I would out of this. This, be, this then is my worst face. I look at that real quick and I say, can I cut a one common out of it? Remember one common has to be 66 and two thirds percent clear or eight twelfths. Do I have eight twelfths of this board clear? Yeah, I think I can work that out. The, the number of cuttings that I have is surface measure plus one over three. The uh, surface measure of this board is nine. I've got plenty of cuttings to be able to work by these and I've got four inches between here and here to sneak a cutting down through very easily. So yes, this side will grade one common. This side, can I get an FAS out of it? Okay, remember it's got nine foot of surface measure. Uh, surface measure divided by four gives me the number of cuttings for FAS. Uh, I can have two cuttings and I could take one here and I've got to have, I've got more than five feet here if I can get four inches wide here. Now this is going to be the tight one. I can't, there's quite a bit of burl associated with this one. I can't quite get four inches wide past that. So, I've got one cutting from here, full width all the way down. My next cutting can't get past that. Remember the minimum cutting is three inches by seven foot or four inches by five foot. I can't get four inches past there for the five. I can't grade this any higher than one common. So this is a one common board, nine foot of surface measure. Okay, again, well, let's flip it over and see which is the worst face on this board. I've got additional ingrown bark here, this defect and this defect are on both sides, so let's go with this being the worst face. Am I going to be able to cut an FAS? No way. Am I going to be able to trim up to an FAS? Pretty tough. Am um, I going to go for one common, two-thirds percent clear or eight twelfths and again I've got ten foot of surface measure surface measure plus one's eleven over three three cuttings one two yeah I can get almost three quarters of this board clear with those cuttings so that's one common on this face the best face can I cut FAS out of it uh, I've got to get ten twelfths clear number of cuttings available uh, is surface measure which is 10 divided by 4 I've got two cuttings got one here I've got at least four inches here at least five foot there I've got really I'm not going to be able to pull it out of here if these defects were closer to the end I think about end trimming it to upgrade it but I'm afraid I'm going to throw away too much material upgrading from the one common to pull an FAS out of this. So I'm going to just sell this at full scale, 10 foot surface measure, one common. Next board. Okay, again, let's flip it over. Worst face is definitely this one because I've got a couple big defects that go through to both sides, but I've got ingrown bark here, 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 and here to be dealing with, all of which is considered a defect. Uh, surface measure of 11. If I want to play for a one common, uh, I've got surface measure plus one, which is 12 divided by three is four cuttings. I'm going to go one cutting here down to here. In fact, let me sketch that out for fun. One cutting. Two 
two cuttings. Got defects here, here, defect here. Now I'm looking to see if I've got two thirds of this board clear. I could do another cutting. I could actually play a game of taking a cutting here, all the way down there, this one down here, and doing that way it looks like I can pull off two thirds clear, which is 66% or 8 twelfths, using just three cuttings which are allowed under standard yield. One common on that side, back side can I cut FAS? No way. This is over a third of the width of the board, that defect just by itself would kick me out of FAS because of the diameter of it. And there's a little defect down there. So we're just going to scale this board as 11 foot of one common. Next board. Okay, we've got an interesting board here. Obviously one that we're going to be doing some end trimming. And I think before I even try to sign the grade, I'm going to look and see where I'm going to end trim at. Um, I'm thinking that I'm not going to be able to pull FAS out of this, which makes a difference in how far up I'd end trim it. But in addition, we've got this wing got some ingrown bark here, ingrown bark here, and ingrown bark here. All those things put together mean that I'm not even going to be able to cut off two common out of this side. So I'm not going to worry about trimming this to make the first lineal foot of FAS since it's not going to have a chance of being FAS. I'll trim it somewhere to make it look like a decent board. Somewhere in there, let's see what the length falls out to be. Three, six, nine feet. Let's trim it anywhere in here between nine and that spot will be fine. Now, how we're gonna take care of this for grade. That's the worst face, obviously. We're gonna to look to see if we can pull two common out of this, meaning that I wanna get at least half of this board or six twelfths clear in the standard cuttings. My surface measure being that this is nine foot long is just barely six foot of surface measure. Surface measure divided by two will give me the number of cuttings. So six divided by two means that I have three cuttings in order to get half of this board clear. I could take a cutting from here, past this ingrown bark there, getting more than half of that section of the board in. Then what am I gonna do for cutting here? Okay, my second cutting, remember has to be at least three inches wide. I've got wing here affecting me approximately this far up. Do I have three inches? Yes, I do. Do I have the minimum of two feet? Yes, I do. So I'm gonna do a cutting right down through here like this that so will go two feet or this far down. My third cutting, I still have two feet. I'm gonna go from here down to this point. Okay, the question is, have I gotten 50% of the board within these three cuttings. Well, at this end, I pulled off 50% from there on down with that cutting being actually a little wider than what I didn't take. This section I've got quite a bit more from here to here than half, and I got a little less than half here. It's all gonna average out to where, yes, I'll get the required number of cutting units to make it too common on this face. That means we've got a too common board. So, nine foot long, Six foot, too common. Okay, let's try this board. Oh, 
Well, here's an interesting defect. This is a man-made defect. It actually was caused by handling of the lumber, and this is just as much of a defect as a knot. There's only two differences between this and a knot. It takes nature a long time to create a knot this big, maybe even years. It takes man only about two seconds to make a defect like this. This is called a moron peck. Not to be confused with a bird peck because it's a different type of animal that makes this. Now, some of these are unavoidable, but some of these are actually made by morons. People who don't have consideration for the value of this lumber and how much a defect like that can actually degrade a board. Let's see how it affects this board and what it would have been without that defect being there. Okay, keeping in mind that defect and looking at this face and then this face to determine the worst face, actually that defect made this face the worst. Without it, it wouldn't have been the worst. I've got some lane here that could easily have been re-edged off if we needed to in order to make grade. And we could have gotten a cutting right straight through this defect and we could have probably, with a little bit of re-edging, made this an FAS face on the worst face. But with that defect right there in the center, it's a whole nother ball game. Remember to get an FAS, our cuttings, let's see, surface measure divided by four is the number of cuttings that we can have. Surface measure is nine. We can have two cuttings. One cutting can start here, and as long as I've got five foot between here and here, which I do, I can get a cutting. The other cutting can start here and go on down. But by doing that, I still have a problem. I've got, I can only lose 10 twelfths of this, I, I've got to have 10 twelfths of this board to make the grade. I can only lose 2 twelfths of the board in the process. And I'm losing more than 2 twelfths. I'm losing 2 inches on less than a 12 inch board here. This end, I'm losing the place where the moron pack is. I'm losing everything from here to the other end. I really can't cut an FAS out of this side of the board. I can pull a one common out of it getting two thirds or eight twelfths clear. Leaving that as one common, what can I do on this face? Well, I've got a little bit of ingrown bark here, a little bit of ingrown bark here, and quite a piece of it here. I really am not going to be able to get any cuttings off of this end. I can take a cutting here to here full width and here to here full width but that's not going to give me anywhere near the 10 twelfths that I would need to make an FAS face. Looking back, I wonder about the upgrading possibility. There's the one thing to keep remembering that FAS lumber is just a little bit less than twice as much in value as one common lumber. So do I want to try to be able to trim this up and make an FAS board out of it? Well, that's a good question. We could actually cut it to an eight foot long board, dropping this off. But that's not going to give me enough room to get a cutting around this moron pack. That ended up being a defect that's going to cost us a little bit of money. Basically what we've got because of that is a one common board. So remember that when you start handling your lumber, that you treat it like a valuable commodity and something that's actually fragile, especially when you start talking about moving it with heavy forklifts. Let's try the next board. See what we've got for the worst face on this board. Some lean down at that end. One defect. A little discoloration in the green here, but no ingrown bark, so that's not a defect. This actually is the worst face. This face has got quite a defect in here, and actually this is a result of using this tree, I believe, for target practice. I winced a little bit when we were sawing this because there's a little bit of lead we hit with the 
bandsaw when we went through this area. We'll see it on one of the other boards later, I believe. What am I going to cut out of this? I can't cut an FAS out of this because this defect is much too large to pass the rule where the surface measure divided by three is the diameter of a knot or a defect that's allowed in an FAS face. Well, we've got a, a defect here that's almost 16 inches long and four inches wide. That, that doesn't really make it. I've got a defect here. Can I cut one common? No problem getting two thirds of this board as one common on this side. Since we pulled a one common off this side, let's see if we can get a one face off the other. Actually, what I could do is trim that end up and I bet you we could do that. We've got quite a bit of defect and problems here. The first lineal foot rule says that 50% of this board has to be clear and then on top of that another 25 has to be sound. You're not going to get that out of this end of the board. So why don't we cut the end off at a place where we can start working a little better with this. I think I'm going to take two foot off of this board. Take it right to this point where this wane, where it's wide here, gets narrower. I can take a cutting down through here like this, all the way to here, and then leave five foot for my last cutting right there. I've got a 10 foot board now. I've got eight foot of surface measure. I'm allowed the two cuttings for the standard yield and I can pull it off with those two cuttings. So this side, trimming that off, actually is going to make an FAS grade, the back side being one common, you've got a first one face board. Okay, let's try this board. Good thing white oak isn't heavy. Okay, let's determine the worst face. I've got Wayne going down through here. I've got a defect here, here, and here being ingrown bark on this side. This face, here's some of that metal we were talking about. Actually, it's lead. Hold on. And as much lead as we've seen in these, they must have used this tree for target practice. Either that or, or a deer stood against it or right next to it, and the guy just unloaded his gun on the tree thinking it was a deer. Uh, but. Fortunately, lead doesn't damage the blade as much as iron would, and it doesn't stain oak like iron stains oak. So it is a defect, but at least it's very localized. So I've got these defects here. These are located pretty close in proximity to each other. If it wasn't for this piece of ingrown bark, the other face would be the worst, but this piece of ingrown bark actually makes this the worst face. So this is the one that we'll try to assign the grade to. This actually is an interesting board to look at. I've got a couple problems in that number one, it wasn't edged quite narrow enough because the wane on the back side went down more than half the length. What I believe I'd end up doing with this board is making it into two boards. I would take and I'd edge a board off this side that would contain these defects just barely, making sure I kept it at least four inches wide and then some. Actually, it's going to be five inches wide. I'd leave this board here, and the same time I was edging it, I would be trying to remove the, some more of the wane that's on the back side. Let me flip this over and look at that again. There. The wane runs all the way from here to here. Remember, on an FAS board, the wane can run down either side up to half the length or both sides up to half the length. But in this case, we've got more than three quarters of the board with wane on it. If we try to make two boards out of this, there's that five inches that we decided to trim it at. And then I take the wane off, which gives me approximately seven inches here. Now, I don't want to take all the wane off, but I want to take it off about to this point, which leaves only about three, four foot of wane on what's a 12 foot board, we're okay if we edge it this wide. 
Now, doing that, what's it gain me? Well, it gains me the opportunity of making this board here a select or a one face actually and this board here I can make a two common out of so between the two this being two common and this being a one face first one face I've got more money as an end result and it's well worth the time that it would take me to re-edge the board it's seven foot 12 foot long is seven foot surface measure of the one face and I've got five foot surface measure of the two common. Okay now between the volume that we got out of these boards here that we just scaled, a few more boards that I didn't end up scaling plus the three common lumber that we pulled out of the center or the last cant in the one piece of heavy eight quarter that we took next to it we're coming up with approximately 187 board feet out of a log that we scaled around 170 foot of measure on the international scale it gives you a little bit of overrun not quite as much as sometimes as you'd expect but remember I upgraded quite a few of the boards earlier by trimming sections off in order to make more money and we weren't looking for producing the most volume of hardwood lumber out of this what I was looking for is the most value most money for your pocketbook so we still had an overrun even with that trimming off of material and that's just extra gravy money that you can get because of the thin kerf in the bandsaw